Welcome to Chemo Experts to learn about neutropenic fever. In this video, you will learn what is it, what does it look like, who gets it, and how do we treat it. Neutropenia occurs when there are not enough white blood cells known as neutrophils to fight infection. A fever occurs when the body's temperature rises above 101 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have a fever, your doctor may say that you are febrile. It is very important to recognize febrile neutropenia as a medical emergency just like a heart attack or stroke. If you have received chemotherapy within the last three weeks and develop a fever, you may need to go to the emergency room immediately. Talk to your doctor about your risk of febrile neutropenia before chemotherapy starts. A single temperature greater than 101 degrees Fahrenheit or a lasting temperature of 100.4 for more than an hour are both considered a fever. It is extremely important that you have a working thermometer at home and take your temperature regularly or anytime you feel feverish. Symptoms such as chills, shaking, nausea or vomiting, diarrhea or skin redness near an IV line can occur with a fever, but often a fever is the only sign of an infection. Neutropenia is caused by chemotherapy suppressing the production of good white blood cells known as neutrophils. Not all chemotherapy causes neutropenia, but when it does, neutrophils usually reach their lowest point called the nadir 7 to 10 days after chemotherapy is started. The risk of fever is greatest during the nadir. Neutropenia isn't only from chemotherapy, it can also be due to cancer located in the bone marrow that prevents healthy neutrophils from being made. Neutropenic fever is often caused by normal bacteria in the intestines or on the skin that make their way into the bloodstream. On occasion, infections can be due to a virus or a fungus. Proper education and acting quickly when there is a fever are keys to preventing and treating this life-threatening condition. To reduce the risk of febrile neutropenia, you may want to stay away from people who are feeling sick. Additionally, potted plants or gardening can be a source of bacteria or fungus. When possible, it's a good idea to steer clear of construction sites as well. Frequent hand washing is the best way to remove bacteria. You can help lower your risk of infection by having your friends and family do the same. Prevention also includes receiving growth factor injections after chemotherapy and obtaining the recommended vaccines. The treatment of febrile neutropenia consists of one or more antibiotics that are effective against a wide variety of bacteria. An antifungal medication may also be added and the blood will be tested to see what bacteria or fungus are growing, if any. Most cases are treated with intravenous antibiotics in the hospital until the neutrophil count returns to normal. If no infection is found, antibiotics will still be continued until the neutrophils return to normal and there are no more fevers. If a bacteria or fungus is cultured from the blood, you may need to continue antibiotic treatment at home. Neutropenic fever is a medical emergency. Luckily, many prevention and treatment options exist. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and tell us what you think. Click pause now to read our disclaimer. And thanks for watching.